New science, protein is not kicking you out of ketosis. I'll open with this. It turns out that most of what is actually creating glucose when you're on a low carb diet isn't even protein at all. It's coming from fat, it's coming from lactate, and it's coming from other amino acids that don't have to do with consuming protein. So a lot of people out there will tell you that consuming protein will kick you out of ketosis. Well, no more than consuming excess fat would. So this is a revised 2020 edition of Gluconeogenesis 101. And if you can indeed have a lot of protein on a ketogenic diet. Hey, I do wanna ask, please do hit that red subscribe button. This is the leading ketogenic and intermittent fasting channel on YouTube. So please do hit that red subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you never miss our daily videos. So first, gluconeogenesis is where your body takes other substrates and turns them into glucose when you do not have enough glucose. So in the instance of someone on a low carb protocol, you're not consuming glucose, right? Well, your body still has to produce it somehow. So it produces it from protein, it produces it from aminos, it produces it from lactate. We'll talk about all that. But anyway, that's the basic process. Well, here's what's interesting. Gluconeogenesis is a demand-driven process, and we don't always know what drives that demand. So what that means is that our body's only going to create glucose from other substrates if we need it. So if it is occurring, quite frankly, we want it to be occurring. Our body is not naturally trying to kick us out of ketosis. It's not just out to get us. It's out to support and just survive. So what's interesting is that gluconeogenesis is regulated by those different functions in the body. But what's interesting is that if you're low on specific protein or you're low on specific things that would allow gluconeogenesis to occur, the rate of gluconeogenesis slows down. Now I'm gonna have a really valid point here in a second, so hear me out. But if you consume too much protein or have you have too much of the fuel for gluconeogenesis, it doesn't necessarily speed it up. So let me give you just a kind of a visual here, an analogy. If we were talking about gluconeogenesis as miles per hour or as a speed of something, right? If 10 grams of protein makes gluconeogenesis go 10 miles per hour and 30 grams of protein makes gluconeogenesis go 30 miles per hour, it would make sense that 60 grams of protein would make gluconeogenesis go 60 miles per hour, right? Wrong. You see, gluconeogenesis only increases up to the point that we need it. So studies are now showing that extra protein doesn't speed up the rate of gluconeogenesis. It doesn't speed up how much glucose is created. It only speeds it up to the point in which it needs it which proves that it's not going to kick us out. It's not gonna kick us out of ketosis. But I've got some really interesting science for you. When you burn fat, what is happening is your triglycerides, which are the storage form of fat, go into the bloodstream. And in the bloodstream, they get broken down into fatty acids and glycerol. Triglycerides. You have fatty acids bound to glycerol. The fatty acids break apart and they go to the liver to create ketones. But then you're left with glycerol. Well, guess what? Two glycerol molecules create glucose via gluconeogenesis. Who would have ever thought? Fat that you consume gets converted into glucose just like protein would. So you don't think that that extra large keto coffee that you're having in the morning would ever kick you out of ketosis, but when you actually look at physiology and how glucose is created in the body, well, it very well could be. I'm not saying don't consume a lot of fats, but fats could be demonized just as much as protein could on a ketogenic diet. But let's back up for a second because the body has a reason for everything. Maybe gluconeogenesis is being signaled because there's a hormonal response, and maybe gluconeogenesis in and of itself triggers some more hormone signaling. Let's talk about this for a second. Whenever we are in somewhat of a starvation state, like we're in ketosis or fasting, we have glucagon, we have cortisol, we have epinephrine, norepinephrine, all these things. All of these things trigger gluconeogenesis, whether you are calorie deprived or not, okay? So there's a hormone signal that's telling us to produce glucose from these other substrates. But what we have to remember is that insulin stops gluconeogenesis. And insulin occurs whenever we have protein or whenever we have carbohydrates, right? So think of this for one second. You're on a ketogenic diet. You're not consuming glucose. You're not consuming carbohydrates. 
but you have a 50 gram protein shake. So you have a bunch of protein coming in and you're afraid it's gonna kick you out of ketosis. But here's what's happening inside your body. That protein causes an insulin spike because protein does. That insulin spike causes the cell to open up to receive the protein. But here's the caveat. Insulin is not selective. Insulin doesn't have the ability to say, hey, I'm opening the door only for protein. No, insulin opens the door for everybody. So that means the protein comes in the cell, but it also means that the blood sugar that is floating in your bloodstream goes into the cell too. But remember, you're not consuming glucose. So that glucose just dropped. That blood sugar just dropped. And you're gonna go hypoglycemic, all because insulin just opened the door for the protein. So what happens? Well, the body, in order to save your life, creates glucose from gluconeogenesis to upregulate blood sugar because it says, uh-oh, this person just ate protein. So the cell is taking in glucose and protein. Well, we have to make sure we create some glucose and create it fast so that this person's blood sugar doesn't go too low. Make sure they don't go hypoglycemic and die, right? Now we have a new appreciation for gluconeogenesis. It's not the enemy, it's our best friend. But just like I said at the beginning of this video, what's wild is that protein is not even the primary source for gluconeogenesis, no. In fact, lactate, which is just a byproduct of exercise and cellular metabolism, glycerol, different aminos like glutamine, alanine, things like that, those make up 90% of gluconeogenesis. But somehow, somewhere, someone in probably internet land led us to believe that all the protein is doing is kicking us out of ketosis. When it turns out, your own exercise, the metabolism of energy, is creating more of a blockade than your protein consumption is. Not saying you shouldn't exercise. Okay. And the fat that you're consuming when you have that tablespoon of coconut oil to try to create more ketones could be even more of a blockade than protein. Enjoy your protein. And I will say, I eat a lot of protein. And just for the record, if you are doing a ketogenic diet or you are eating a lot of protein, I highly recommend you check out ButcherBox down below in the description. They are a big sponsor of this channel and they do supply me with probably about 60% of the protein that I eat because I eat clean protein. So anyway, they are a grass-fed, grass-finished meat delivery service. Super high quality protein, super high quality grass-fed, grass-finished meat that is quite literally cheaper than most grass-fed, grass-finished meats at the grocery store. So please do check them out. There's a special link and special pricing that you won't be disappointed with. It's gonna get you the grass-fed, grass-finished meat delivered right to your doorstep. So thank you, ButcherBox, for extending this to all the people that watch my videos. And thank you for supporting this channel as well. So check them out after you watch this video. So we start looking at other studies though. We start looking at uh, people that are doing ketogenic diets that are eating lots of protein and including myself, right? I recently did an experiment where I doubled my protein intake and I created more ketones. I doubled my protein intake and my body fat went down 1% and my body weight went up two and a half pounds. I gained muscle and lost fat in a three week period of time. Okay. I was testing this theory and testing a lot of the science. So anyhow, studies are showing is that quite literally, increase in protein does not seem to affect the increase in gluconeogenesis. However, when you are doing a ketogenic diet, your levels of gluconeogenesis will increase naturally. On average, when you start a ketogenic diet, your levels of gluconeogenesis will increase by 14%. Why are they naturally increasing? Well, think of it like this. You're not consuming carbohydrates, so you're not having an insulin spike. Well, what's gonna happen? Well, until the pancreas gets used to the fact that you're not gonna need as much insulin, it's gonna continue to pump out a lot of insulin. It just does. So you just went from spoiling your body rotten by consuming 200, 300, 400, 500 grams of carbohydrates a day. Your pancreas is like, boom, insulin, 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 insulin. And then all of a sudden you shut off the carbohydrate consumption, your pancreas is still overreacting every time you eat, boom. It's like, okay, there's food, oh, I got it, I'm used to this, boom, I'm gonna spurt out more insulin, spurt out more insulin, spurt out more insulin. But what happens when you spurt out insulin without glucose? We talked about this earlier. Blood sugar drops, boom. So the body has no choice but to naturally upregulate gluconeogenesis production until you're fat adapted. I've been doing ketogenic diet on and off for nine or 10 years. My rate of gluconeogenesis is probably not as high as yours if you haven't been doing it for that long, right? So that's one interesting way of looking at it. The other simple piece is another thing we talked about. All of a sudden you're consuming more fats, which means 
more fats getting broken down, more triglycerides getting broken down, more glycerol in the bloodstream. And remember, two glycerols equals a glucose via gluconeogenesis, right? So simply by switching over to a ketogenic diet, reducing your carbohydrate intake where your insulin is still high, in conjunction with two glycerol molecules, boom, voila, we have high degrees of gluconeogenesis. Eat the protein, spare the muscle, eat the protein that is going to trigger more of a metabolic response and eat the protein that is going to make you burn more fat, at least in my opinion it does. It's gonna satiate you, it's gonna build muscle, and it's gonna make your ketogenic diet a heck of a lot more fun. And I don't care where you get your protein from. I like to get it from meat. I like to get it from good quality shakes. I like to get it from good quality shakes, but I don't care what you're doing. Just get the protein in. It will not ruin your ketogenic diet. See you tomorrow.